Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Grow Your Tutoring Business with me, Richard Cowell. Today we are going to be focusing on side hustle versus business owner. Today we're going to be focusing on two main points. One is risk and the other is goal setting. These are the two areas that will define whether we are running a side hustle or we want to be stretching ourselves into becoming a business owner. So let's not hang around, let's run the intro and let's get straight to it. Let's start by talking about the difference between the side hustle and being, being a business owner. So the definition of a side hustle is it's something that you can do alongside your main job. It's another stream of income that you have coming into your household that is outside of your normal or usual contracted working hours working for somebody else. So for a lot of tutors, we're gonna be full-time teachers at the same time or part-time teaching, and then we're gonna fit in some sessions around our busy lives. So it could be that you tutor an hour an evening or perhaps a couple of hours a week on an evening or at the weekend, just to supplement your income. That's the definition of a side hustle. And the main objective of that side hustle is to boost your income. There's nothing, nothing more going on behind it other than you would like a bit of extra money going into your account. And it might be that it's you're paying off debt or you're using it to um, pay for the wedding that's coming up or going on holiday or perhaps it's for the car finance, whatever it may be, but it's driven by the need for extra income. Whereas if you are moving towards creating your own business, that's driven by business growth and business productivity and perhaps having a wider vision of supporting children and families in a bigger way than you can in the classroom being a full-time teacher. And so the goals of each of those things are different. Now, how we can define it for ourselves and whether we want to move away from being a side hustle and going towards a business owner is a bit of a personality trait. And or that you're being forced into making a big decision. Like perhaps like you're in a workplace at the moment that's not 100% supportive and you just feel there must be a better way. At the heart of any business, there is usually someone there who is a risk taker, someone who is going to be an early adopter of something, somebody who doesn't stop and wait for the right time. They just see the opportunity and they go for it. Now, if you are a risk taking person, it is likely that you are, and, and you're at the moment at the side hustle stage of your tutoring business, it's likely that you've already asked yourself some questions like, if I could just find five more students, I could give up a day of teaching. If I could just find 10 more students, I could be uh, working just two to three days a week in the classroom. If, you, if those kind of thoughts or questions have been running through your mind, it's likely that you're on your way to becoming a business owner. And it's about mindset. It's your mindset shift between side hustle and full-time income through your own business. If you're risk averse, it doesn't mean that you can't switch into business mode because risk averse people, what they like to do is ask themselves lots of questions and then go and prove that it can work. So it might be that if you're risk averse, like you don't, you, you're reliant on your monthly salary, you don't wanna take the risk of losing your monthly salary and then going into a business that perhaps won't work, then you're gonna to wanna to look at how you prove that your business is going to work first. And we would do that by having Having a side hustle. Does it work in the evenings? Does it work at the evening in, at the weekends? Is it something that you can spend time doing without it taking enjoyment away from your life? Is it adding something to your life? And if you can square all of those things off, it's likely then you will take steps towards becoming the business owner rather than just seeing it as a side hustle. What I'm gonna encourage everybody to do right now is just to consider where they are along that spectrum. So we've got extremes at the spectrum. We've got the people who love taking a risk right at the edge of this spectrum here. And then we've got the ones who don't like taking risks at all at this end. Like, Where are you on the spectrum? Most of us, I mean, I don't like putting people in boxes, but most of us will live somewhere between, um, just not on the extremes really, but somewhere else in this middle section where, 
There'll be certain situations where you don't mind taking a risk and there'll be certain situations where you're gonna be cautious. I'm gonna consider that most of us are a little bit cautious when it comes to finances because we worry about it. It's something that we take around with us everywhere. I think particularly in the public sector we do because we know that how much we can earn, there is a cap. We can't go beyond a certain point unless we take on quite ridiculous amounts of responsibility. Consider where you are on the risk spectrum. If you are a huge risk taker, it's likely that you're gonna go jumping in at the opportunities and there's a potential that you could risk everything and not get any return back. On the other hand, if you're at the other end of the spectrum, it is likely that you won't risk anything at all, which is just as dangerous. And we end up staying in our lane, not making any changes or um, taking any risks with our lives. So we don't move forward with anything either. We end up staying still in the place that we're at right now. And you're the sort of person who might look back over the last five years and go, I wish I had just done something. The time is now to make change. And one of my most famous sort of quotes that I go back to that really helps me is the fact that like the best time to plant the tree was 20 years ago. The next time, the next best time is today. And so we can't let what's happened in the past affect our future. We just need to go right. If today's the day, this is the day that we're going to do it. Let's start making the difference right now. Let's not put it off any longer. A question I get asked a lot inside the group that I run on Facebook and by just people who, who know what I do as a, as a job now, is that how do you know when it's the right time to switch? And I've got to be honest, there's no easy answer that I can give you here other than that, when it, I can give you my experience. And it was, there was a, a time when I was teaching full time that I felt a lot, of, a lot of the tasks I was being asked to do wasn't making a big difference to the children in my care, the children in my class. A big passion and the reason why I wanted to become a teacher was because I, I wanted to make children's lives better. I wanted to sort of show them that life can be better. I mean, I worked in deprived areas, so it was a case of making sure that these people could do the at least the basics of English and maths and the core curriculum and be able to use that to make their lives better and potentially then their children's lives better because I believe that is what we really want to do. There's a legacy there and that's the thing that really motivates me. But what I found was I was just, I mean, I don't want to use the word red tape because I feel like that's a little bit overused, but there was so much or so many tasks that we had to complete that wasn't about changing children's lives. It wasn't about making sure the lessons were prepared properly. It was about, can you assess? Can you put it on this sheet? And then can you upload that into this program or management inf information system? And then let's all sit around and talk about the data when you know, we're talking about numbers on a screen rather than the lives of these children. And that was a big thing for me. You know, I started to not really align my personal ethos with the ethos of education. And then suddenly that causes friction and friction causes tension and, and stress. And I wanted autonomy. So the big drive for me away from the side hustle into the business was driven by autonomy. I wanted to have a bigger say in how I spent my time. So for, when people ask me that question of how did you know, I knew that it was on the cards for me because I felt it in, I'm gonna say in my soul, but there, it, there was just a feeling somewhere. I was like, I need to be able to do something different. This isn't, what I'm doing right now isn't what I was put here to do. And it went from there. What that doesn't do is give you the how, all right? Because lots of us will be going, do you know what? I share that passion. That's, that's it. You're, you're, you're telling me exactly how I feel, but I don't know the next stage. Well, what I then did was I, I, I fell back on some previous experiences of being, I was at a business degree. I, I read, started to read the business books again and some self-help books. I went to business conferences and webinars and went just to listen to people who were making it happen for themselves in their own industry. And I started to apply some of that knowledge in my own life. So it was about taking the action, like using that passion and energy that you have and then going to find out and learn about stuff and then applying it in your own life to make a difference to you and the people you work with 
And like for me, it was about affecting the lives of my own children and my own family as well. So there was like a really big motivation to make it work. So from a risk perspective, I really want you to think about where you sit along the spectrum, because if you're too far down the risk spectrum and you don't like taking risks, you're gonna stay in your lane and not make much, much of a change. Or if you're too risky, you might go after everything and make nothing work because you're just risking it all, but you're not sure whether it's the right thing. We need to have some kind of either someone in our, in our lives that gives us that balance, that will ask those questions and keep us in check, or someone in our lives that's gonna motivate us, like a mentor who will say, you can do this, I've got the confidence for you, borrow some of mine, we can make this work. If you're at the extreme end, you will need something like that. Most importantly, go and learn and then apply. So if you apply for a course, you need to listen to the expert and then go and apply it in real time. If you're reading a book, what can you take away from the book that you can apply in your real life? Start applying things in your real life as soon as possible. The other difference between a side hustle and a business, this is the second point, is about the goals that you have. If your main goal is just to top up your income, because you need to pay for the wedding or it's the holiday or it's the car or it's home improvement, whatever it may be. If the money is your main target, then it's gonna stay as a side hustle because what happens is you're gonna get that money in and you're gonna pay it straight out. There's no investment back into the business because your money is already spent before you have it. You know, it already has a purpose. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think most of, most of the tutoring businesses I know have started as a side hustle because of those reasons. Someone was getting married. Someone needed to upgrade their car. Someone just recently bought a house and they needed to renovate it. They needed to raise some sort of income or more, more monthly turnover so that they could afford these things in their life. It can start there. A business owner has a much wider vision. A business owner is gonna have goals in their life like how many children they wanna support, how they can improve the child's life. They're gonna have a vision statement and hopefully a mission statement which leads to the tactics that they use in their day-to-day -day business so they get growth. So it becomes more of a focus. Uh, the, the business becomes the focus rather than the money. And this is really important as a business owner because I, what I've seen over the last couple of years of supporting tutors is that we get stuck in, we wanna grow our business, but we're stuck in the side hustle mentality. And we need to switch from the side hustle mentality into becoming a business owner. And it does mean investment of time. It does mean investing in books to read, courses to attend, and you widen your business network and talk to other experts and, and use them as mentors. You can pay for a mentor, you can, find mentors if you're networking and just people who like to connect. But ultimately, it's about shifting your mindset from having this money coming in and having it already pre-spent before it comes to you to having a business pot of money which you're investing into the business to grow, to grow your business to reach more people, to grow your business to have more monthly income, but essentially almost linked to the same reason you started your side hustle in the first place so that you've got more disposable income and perhaps even a little bit more time to enjoy it. They're your main two points. I hope they make sense. And I hope that you can, what you get out of this session, out of this podcast, it are ways forward. And perhaps it even helps you make a decision, like where are you at the moment in your business? Are you still a side hustle? Are you happy with that at the moment? Does that at the moment suit where you're at in your life? Or are you wor working towards perhaps just changing your mindset into becoming a business owner? Or perhaps you're already a business owner and you're like, yes, this makes perfect sense now. I hope you enjoyed it. I shall speak to you all very soon. Take care, everybody. See you later.